Oh, hello. Welcome to the Flying Freya. Tonight's video is going to be a little longer. It's going to be about half an hour. And we're focusing tonight on women's firsts in aviation and LGBTQIA plus firsts in aviation. So let's get into it. Oh, quick fact, only 9% of all pilots in the world are women. And that actually goes down to about 6% when you take out trainee pilots. Just something worth considering as we go through this. So well, let's start. First off, we have Bessie Reish. In 1910, September 10, she was the first, uh, first woman to do a solo flight. She was also America's first female dentist and doctor. She specialized in using lightweight materials to construct aircraft uh, using bamboo for the framework, silk for the material, and piano wire instead of uh, iron-based wire. 1912, on April 16th, Harriet Quimby was the first woman to fly the English Channel. Uh, she flew it in the Blerio 11. You're welcome to correct me on that pronun pronunciation. She was also the author of seven screenplays that were made into silent film shorts. 1913. Ruth Law was the first woman to fly at night, and on the 19th of November in 1916, she broke the record for the Cross America flight airspeed record by flying 590 miles from Chicago to New York. She woke up one morning in 1922 to discover that her husband had announced her retirement in the newspaper and forbid her from further flying. Sadly, she acquiesced to his demands. 1921, we had Bessie Coleman. She was the first African-American to earn a pilot's license and an incredibly talented stunt pilot who would stop at nothing to complete a difficult stunt. She wanted to found a school for young black aviators, but sadly she died in a crash at the age of 34 before she could do so. 1923. Here we have Florence Lowe Pancho Barnes. Um, she was Hollywood's first film stunt pilot in 1929 uh, in Hollywood. And she also broke Amelia Earhart's air speed record. 1930, Eleanor Smith and Evelyn Bobby Trout. There's a typo there, I apologise. In 1930, Eleanor Smith and Evelyn Bobby Trout were the first to refuel in flight. Eleanor flew a Waco 10 under all four of New York City's East River bridges, and I believe is still the only person ever to do so. Uh, Bobby Trout also performed the first all-night flight from Miners Field, which also became the women's solo endurance record of 17 hours. In 1931, Anne Morrow Lindbergh, uh, the wife of uh, Charles Lindbergh, obviously they had their baby taken as well, uh, she was the first to get a gliders pilot's license. She also completed over 40,000 miles of explor exploratory flying and surveyed transatlantic air routes. In 1932, we have Hazel Ying Li. She was the first Chinese American to earn a pilot's license. She joined the Women's Air Force Service Pilots, or WASPs, in World War II, under the command of Jackie Cochran, and was the first Chinese American to fly for the US military. Now, this is a theme that's going to be recurring. Of course, we have in 1932 the legendary Amelia Earhart. A whole host of records. Um, she was, of course, the first to solo across the Atlantic. 
the first solo round trip from Hawaii to continental US. And obviously, the first round the world flight attempt, where sadly it is suspected that she ran out of fuel and crashed. Here we have Janet Bragg, 1943. She was the first African American to earn a commercial pilot's license and the first black woman to enroll in the Curtis Wright School of Aeronautics in 1933. She was rejected by the Wasps by Jackie Cochran because she was black. She suffered sadly many other rejections and discriminations based upon the color of her skin. However, an amazing pilot. And on that theme, we have 1953, on May the 18th, Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline Cochran, or Jackie Cochran, was the first woman to break the sound barrier. And in 1962, she was the first to fly a jet across the Atlantic. She was, as stated earlier, commanding officer of the Wasps, and also denied Janet Bragg's entry into the Wasps for being black. She ran for Congress as a lifelong Republican, but was defeated by the Democratic Party's first Asian American congressman, Philip Singh Sound. In 1963, we have Valentina Tereshkova, obviously very famous as the first woman to fly in space. She even has a crater on the far side of the moon named after her. Due to her support of Putin and being influential in removing presidential term limits, as well as supporting the illegal invasion of Ukraine, she is now under a variety of international sanctions and asset freezing. In 1964, we have Geraldine Mock, and she was the first to circumnavigate the globe in a Cessna 180, which was named the Spirit of Columbus. An amazingly talented pilot who also holds uh, another 14 world records, I believe. Here we have, in 1976, Emily Howell Warner. Um, she was the first woman to become an airline captain. And the first female member of the Airline Pilots Association. Now here we have, in 1979, we have uh, Marcy Ng. Um, she was the first African-American pilot in the U.S. military. Uh, she started, I believe, as a second lieutenant, and she finished as a lieutenant colonel after serving 22 years. In 1986, on December 30th, Beverly Bass captained the first all-female crew in commercial jet aviation history. I did quite a, tried to do quite a bit of research on her, but she basically was just a very committed commercial aviation pilot. So in 1991, we have Patty Wagster, and she was the first woman to win the title of US National Aerobatic Champion. Um, something I find really cool is she's also type rated to fly the TBM Avenger and the L-39 jet trainer, among many other aircraft. 
For those that don't know, the TBM Avenger was a, a dive bombing and torpedo aircraft in the Second World War, and uh, something pretty special. If you don't know about it, go Google it. In 1992, we have Barbara Harmer, and she was the first woman to pilot Concorde. Uh, she also started her career as an air traffic controller, and after her flying career, she was an experienced yacht master. Next up is Eileen M. Collins. She was the first uh, female shuttle pilot. She piloted Discovery. And she was also, also the first commander of the space shuttle program. First female commander of the space shuttle program. She retired in 2005 with the rank of colonel. She had flown 6,751 hours in 30 different types of aircraft and had logged over 872 hours in space flights. In 1997, we come to Gemma Jennifer Murray, first to circumnavigate the globe in a helicopter. She was also the first woman to land a helicopter on both the North and South Poles. And on the second attempt, on the first attempt on the South Pole, she had a near fatal accident. Thankfully survived and went on to do it again a few years later. Again, I apologize for my French pronunciations, but in 2009, we have Virginie Goyot. Uh, she was the first to command a national aerobatic demonstration team. And she also flew the Mirage F-1CR in Chad, Tajikistan, and Afghanistan. Now we're going to move on to our LGBTQIA plus first. And it's pretty hard to find demographics because obviously a lot of people still aren't out for their own safety, which is tragic in its own way. Um, obviously, I've linked all my sources, but yes, 12% of all US pilots are part of the LGBTQIA plus community. And first up, we're going to start in 1936 with Roberta Cowell, first trans woman pilot, first trans woman to undergo gender reassignment surgery in 1951 in the UK. Uh, she served in the Second World War flying reconnaissance Spitfires. Uh, she flew unconscious over enemy territory for over an hour, taking anti-aircraft fire when her oxygen system failed at 31,000 feet. Uh, the aircraft just blew itself, and thankfully she regained consciousness at low altitude and returned to base safely. Later on in the war, she was uh, shot down in a recon typhoon and captured. Uh, she was taken to Stalag Luft 1, where she remained until the end of the war. After the war, she suffered with PTSD after seeing a film where... Uh, a Spitfire pilot got shot down and captured. It obviously triggered flashbacks for her. Uh, and after the war, she continued to be active in motorsport. Sadly, despite her own struggles and successes with transition, she was not very supportive of the wider trans community at the time.
Next we have, in 1963, Leonard Matlevich. He was the first openly gay man in the US Air Force. Honestly, the same as Amelia Earhart, I could do a whole half-hour episode just on those two people. I strongly recommend, if you're interested, read about him. He's a fascinating man that did amazing work for the community. Um, so yes, he was the first openly gay man in the US Air Force. He fought with everything he had to bring about change for the gay community, both societally and in the military. He also did an incredible amount of work on getting HIV and AIDS. Um, he was sadly honorably discharged uh, from the Air Force. And on his tombstone is written, Gay Vietnam Veteran. When I was in the military, they gave me a medal for killing two men and a discharge for loving one. Sadly, he died at the age of 44 from complications of HIV and AIDS. He is still, to this day, a hero for US activists. There are even marches that start from his gravestone. Coming up to 1983, we have Sally Ride. Very well-known astronaut, of course, but she was the first LGBT astronaut. At least that's known. Um, Sally and her partner of 27 years, Tam O'Shaughnessy, um, founded Sally Ride, Sally Ride Science together, which created entertaining science programs and publications aimed at upper elementary and middle school students with a particular focus on young women. Uh, they also co-wrote six books on space, also aimed at children. Very sadly, she only came out in her obituary after she died. And here we have in 2020, Adam Harry. Uh, he is India's first trans man pilot. Um, sadly, he was originally denied his license by the Directorate General of Civil Aviation, or the DGCA, on the grounds of gender dysphoria and hormone replacement therapy. He sadly faced several transphobic questions, and the DGCA showed a complete lack of understanding on the topic. Um, he filed a writ petition in the Kerala High Court, um, which I believe is going very well, and the DGCA is now working on a more inclusive policy, bringing it more in line with the standards of the FAA and the EASA. Um, but credit where credit's due, he has pretty much single-handedly brought about change for trans rights in the aviation industry in India, which is a huge accomplishment. The discrimination and intolerance faced by trans people in India is huge. So, here we have Isla Holden. She was the first openly trans pilot in the British Armed Forces. After serving 13 years in the army, she also served with Prince William in search and rescue, flying the Sea King helicopter. She now works for the British Police Service as a helicopter pilot. She has been an advisor and volunteer for All About Trans, working on how the media portrays the transgender community, which, as I'm sure many will know, isn't well, uh, and making big strides in improving that, as well as being a proud patron for Mermaids, which supports gender-diverse children, young people, and their families since 1995. Um, she has done a huge amount of work for the LGBTQIA plus community. Uh, 
And here we have Jessica Taylor. And she was the first transgender pilot not to be grounded by the FAA. Um, she is qualified to fly on over 30 types of aircraft. And she was basically required to only take two days out of flying, just so that her name and data could be updated in the FAA registry. And that was it. Um, she has represented the community on national television and is a member and supporter of the National Gay Pilots Association. Um, she has also done a huge amount of work in... helping to end discrimination and ignorance on the topic. For members of the LGBTQIA plus community who are pilots or who want to become pilots, um, the NGPA does offer scholarships and advice and all manner of support, and I can strongly recommend it. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's been interesting and I hope it's highlighted some of the challenges and discrimination that both women and members of the LGBTQIA plus community have faced throughout the history of aviation. Um, it's a very, very brief overview. If anyone feels there needs to be corrections, please leave comments, let me know. It's a topic that you could study for years. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and click the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video.